No. There's someone I need to kill. You're out in front. Who are you gonna shoot at? A dead man! I made my first American movie, Mortal Kombat, and it was the number one movie. And on Monday, after the number one weekend, I went to go have lunch with Roger Corman. And uh, he said, kid, it's great you've got a number one movie. What are you going to do next? And I said, well, Roger, what I really want to do is I want to remake one of your movies, Death Race 2000. And he said, that's great, kid. We'll make it your next movie. And in a typical Hollywood development story, 14 years later, we finally made the film. Was it always the prison idea, or did it go through different incarnations? No, it really, um, the movie developed. Um, there were different ideas, you know, it was more of a, it was a around the world race to start with. It was um, a more CG heavy movie to start with. It was a more futuristic movie. And as time went on and I became more and more disillusioned with, with CG, well, not disillusioned, but I, I've made my fair share of computer generated movies. And I just think audiences are becoming a little tired of them. And for me, the car movies I love are all from the 70s and the early 80s. You know, it's Road Warrior, Bullet, French Connection, Sam Peckinpah's The Getaway, Walter Hill's The Driver. It's movies that have real visceral thrill for an audience because you can see the car action is real. There's no CG in there. Um, and that's the kind of movie I wanted to make. And let me tell you, it's a much more difficult movie to make. You know, if we'd done this CG, much easier. We'd have made the movie faster, we'd have made it cheaper, wouldn't look anywhere near as good. Um, so, you know, to be able to pull off the car stunts we wanted to do, it really took a year of preparation before we shot a frame of the film. This one was one of the, uh, the hardest uh, physical uh, preps I've had to undergo. Yeah, I mean, there was a terrible regime that uh, started at 5 a.m. and, uh, you know, that was before every day's work. And it was a very restricted diet, I, you know, all wanted me to get very lean and chiseled and cut and sort of look like I spent most of my life in a prison, <laughs> which uh, was, uh, you know, something that he intended on me looking like. The inside of that, have you had a close look inside? That car? No, no. Oh my God, I mean, they've got the most tricked out cars you've ever seen, you know, this, and it's all like rec tech style, so it's, uh, you know, it's uh, harking back to like the Mad Max type vehicles. So, um, yeah, we was, we was excited every day to see these things slowly get put together piece by piece. And, you know, we'd see glimpses of what um, uh, these miniguns can actually do. And, you know, 3,000 3, rounds a minute. Have you ever seen one of those take a car to pieces? I never really pictured you as evil incarnate, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> evil incarnate is great to play. Mm -hmm. It's very, very fun to have license and be paid to be evil incarnate and be able to do that in a, in a film is a, a lot of fun. Fast and the Furious and Transformers and now this. So what's up with you and cars, man? I it's love it, man. <laughs> um, I have a, uh, 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 I have a car, car sickness, I would say, and I've been trying to find a cure, but haven't found one yet. I love it, man. Now, I know the question keeps coming up, but I got to ask the Stallone thing because those are some big shoes to fill. But yes, you sir. Did it, you did it nicely. Uh, Try it, man. Out of respect to what he did in the first film, I purposely didn't watch it. I sick out of my car. Even when I did Too Fast, Too Furious, I never seen the original Fast and Furious because it just puts you, I put me on. tried to bring as much of an original tone and an and original voice to it as I could. And, um, you know, I actually ran into Sylvester Stallone um, when I did the national anthem for uh, Floyd Mayweather in Vegas. And, uh, and I told him that, uh, that, that, that I, I uh, you know, replaced him in, 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 in the uh, remake of, uh, of uh, Death Race. And he was excited. You know why? It's one of those movies I never got to see. Oh. And uh, I said to Paul, I said, can, you know, can I borrow the DVD? And he said, no, you, you're not allowed to watch the movie until after we finished our movie. And uh, for some reason, he, j he just didn't want it to, to muddy the water mm -hmm. and uh, have any, any, uh, any attachment to... Uh, I mean, it is a homage to the, uh, the original. Mm -hmm. It's not really uh, a remake. It's, uh, it's, it's inspired by... So uh, he, did, he just wanted uh, to keep my head clear and just treat it as a, as, a, as a film that he wanted to make. I've seen a lot of the original film. I have not yet seen like, the whole movie together, but I've seen a lot of the original film. 
And it's kind of fun. I mean, like, it's a points game. I play the points game. You know, I drive around with, like, ten points. You know? Always. Yeah. It's actually made me a worse driver than think death race. Because now I'm driving, I'm like, I just want to do this, like, ram it to someone. Why, why is car movies and things like that with guns or anything so much fun? It's because this is what we want to do while we're in traffic. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I had a machine gun half the time. Yeah, I mean, if, I think if, if DMV showed death race to, to yeah. people, to, they would call them road race. Yeah, you know? exactly. It would be just a little crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. There is no point system in this movie, but certainly a lot of people get run over. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that, that's really the major difference. And I saw this movie as, as the genesis of the death race. Mm -hmm. it's, I was always fascinated with Roger's movie as to how death race had become the national sport in America. And clearly the president didn't just invent it. You know, yeah. He must have kind of taken something that was existing and developed it. And, and I thought, well, what was that? How did it begin? And I wanted to tell a very realistic story as to how something like Death Race could end up happening in North America. And, it, and I've thought about the point system a lot, and I felt it was just, it was too developed and too, it was the sport, it felt too much like a sporting event mm -hmm. to have the point system, and I felt the death race at the point we're telling it, it's, it's, it's too early, it's kind of too wild and unruly at this point, the game, yeah. to actually have a point system. So, you know, touch wood if this movie's a hit, then if we do a sequel, you know, I think one of the things we'll explain is, you know, how the points come into being and kind of deal with that whole pedestrian thing as well. Mm. But I, I think this is far from being a politically incorrect film. I mean, we... It, it's, it's a very on PC movie, mm -hmm. even, even without the point system. It's like every action movie, or even like the franchises nowadays, are like PG-13, you know? And it, like, to, uh, like Die Hard and Aliens, and like it's all going that route, yeah. <laughs> so it was you know, the, the, the studio keeps referring to this movie. I think they can't quite believe they made it, because they keep saying this is, the, this is the major studio movie that should never have been made, because it, it kind of feels more like a gritty independent movie, but made on a big budget, because it... It really is, it, it, it's unapologetically hardcore, you know, we, we kill a lot of people, we crash a lot of cars, Joan Allen swears a lot, you know, there's foul <laughs> language all over the place. You have probably, I think, which is the most vile and coolest line of dialogue this Maybe. year. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Paul Anderson, the director, is like, that's the best line I've ever written. That is the absolute best line I've ever written. <laughs> and I got to say it. And, uh, and it pays off, given, you know, where the character, you see the character, you know, controlled and manipulating until she kind of isn't anymore. And, um, and I felt very honored to get to say that particular line. And they even did like a little techno version, I guess, at the end credits. We I know it, which so. I did, I've heard. <laughs> I saw the film and then I... Um, didn't actually uh, went to the restroom during the credits, and then my daughter had seen it with and a friend of mine. Like, you won't believe what's at the very end of the credits. <laughs> I'm like, really?